What's up guys? Just kidding, it's me. I'm Stuart Petty and here are my five tips for a successful young relationship. Now young relationships are generally not a good idea when you really take a step back and look at them. I mean at first glance, and sometimes even at second glance, they seem like a great idea, you know? There's someone who supports you and someone who will look after you and you can kiss them when you're bored. I mean, sounds great, right? Think again. When you're tied down to one person during your teenage years, it puts a damper on the experiences you could be having. Guys, when you get a girlfriend, the amount of girls who will want to get to know you and want to talk to you will definitely drop. Plus, it can cause heartbreak and sorrow that really is avoidable if you step out of the boyfriend-girlfriend scene. Now, I could go on until my face turns blue, but number one, probably most of you don't even care what I just said, and number two, blue is not my color. <laughs> While 99% of young relationships end badly and are really not worth the emotional damage that they've caused you or your partner, there are some precautions that you can take to make it be a successful one. So, tip number one, make sure you can stay friends. Now I understand that this isn't a new concept, but let me give you a new way of thinking about it. When things don't work out, staying just friends can be a comfortable alternative. Now this can be hard because direct communication is really not that popular, especially among chicas. More on this later. Ask yourself now. Do I really enjoy being friends with this person? Think about this and consider it before you even get into the relationship. That'd be the prime time. Some of the best relationships are built on a foundation of deep, true friendship. I may go as far as to say that all good relationships are built on a foundation of deep, true friendship. So being good friends beforehand with your lover bay can make this more of an achievable concept. Now I know that sometimes couples will try to be just friends with each other after things don't work out but usually it's a really uncomfortable type friendship and there's an, always an elephant in the room when they talk. And elephant hunting's illegal. They can't just shoot it. <laughs> so don't invite the elephant in in the first place. Oh man. Maintain a comfortable friendship with your partner and then make sure it's not all based on romance and ooh dang, she's fine. Tip number two. If you can't see yourself marrying the bay, don't date her exclusively. Go on dates with him? Sure. Seriously date him? The purpose of a relationship is to try things out, man. It's not like for life. I mean, like, how are you gonna know how to date people when you're older if you're like, don't try to date them now? And I was like, ah. No. The reason for a relationship should be because you see potential with that person. Like you really feel that you could marry them. A romantic relationship, anything between friendship and marriage, is a living, breathing thing. Having it just sit around for months or years is like walking around a tiger pit with a steak tied to your face. The chances of a painful breakup keep growing and growing, and it becomes harder and harder to be able to maintain a healthy and safe relationship with your sugar cakes. It's a selfish thing to get into a relationship when you can see the exit sign from the entrance. It's pretty much saying, hey, I love you, and I think you're the most beautiful girl ever and the only girl for me, but it doesn't really matter because in a year I'll be saying this to some other chick anyway, so whatever. I bought you chocolate. Thinking in the long term is seriously underrated. Ladies, imagine a man said that to you. Like, what the heck? Creating trust issues much? Anyway, that brings me to tip number three. Be careful with your heart. Contrary to popular belief, I think that we have a lot more control of our hearts than love songs and young adult romance novels give us credit. If you are looking to give your heart away, you're gonna find somewhere to stuff it. George Washington. But Stuart, I'm not, I'm not looking to give my heart away. Are you? Are you saying you don't want to have a heartbreak, but you're retweeting all of these relationship posts and listening to all these dishy dashy love songs and flirting with everyone you meet? Try to look into your subconscious thinking. Be aware that if you're in a young relationship, things might and probably will end. Now if you're following tip number two, you won't be in a situation that you want things to end eventually. And no, I'm not contradicting myself. Before I said it's selfish if you can see the exit from the entrance. What I'm saying here is you might want things to work out and you might be perfectly happy with everything, but it's not always the exact same on their side. Basically what I'm saying is even though you don't want things to end, they probably will. So try not to shove your heart as far up a guy's ear as you can. I mean, if you're 20 and you're looking to get into a marriage, that's a different story. But that story isn't this story. Tip number four. Lack of communication is the number one cause for failed relationships. As I said before, direct communication is really underrated. Where we're all about hint dropping. And this also especially goes to the ladies in the audience. Shout out. Hey. Lots of dudes have this issue too. Believe me. But anyway, this one thing can make a huge difference. Let me illustrate. Missy over here gets bothered by the fact that Hunky doesn't ask her about her day and he just talks about his own day. This goes on for about a month, 
until Missy gets so fed up with it that she goes and talks to all her little girly friends about it and constructs this idea in her mind that he's not faithful and he doesn't care for her and if he really did care for her he'd be asking about how her day went until it's like a little rain cloud just sitting over her head instead of just addressing the problem to Hunky herself. Finally, Hunky asks her what's bothering her and Missy just blows up and she's so mad and she just tells him everything. And this takes Hunky back because he didn't see anything. He didn't notice this. And the conversation gets all heated and crazy. At the end of this heated discussion, it can go two very obvious ways. One, they resolve their differences and continue on with their wonderful little relationship. Two, they break up because of this. Like, really? We'd much rather just eliminate that chance instead of dealing with silly little problems like this. So what could have happened is that Missy got annoyed a couple times when Hunky didn't ask her about her day. And instead of waiting after like the third time it happened, Missy said, Hey, you know man, I, I, I wish you'd ask me about my day. i just wondering why you didn't. You just talk about your day and then by the time you're finished with that, you move on with the conversation. I just wanted to know why you, you know wanted to tell you how I feel about it. And then Hunky might say, well, it's because last time I asked you about your day, the last few times, you were really standoffish towards me and you kind of were frustrated at me and it seemed like you didn't want to talk about your day when you came home from work, so I thought I would just talk about my day. And Missy continues to say that that one week she was just going through a rough time at work and she didn't want to talk about it because it made her feel sad inside. But that time was over and she'd love to be asked about her day now. There you have it, bam, argument averted. Tip number five, phones are great and you can wait. When it comes to touchy subjects and conversations that are crucial and have a good potential for high running emotions, don't text about it. So much of conversation is lost through text and it may seem that the other person is just sarcastic or standoffish when in reality they're just texting. Phone calls are great. They've solved the problem that I've had about texting crucial conversations. And if you can't talk on the phone to the person at that moment for one reason or another, just wait it out, it's definitely worth it. Basically, phones are great. So there you have it, my five tips on how to young relationship. Thanks so much for watching till the end of this video and I wish you luck in all your romantic endeavors. And hopefully I haven't offended too many of you with this video.